ان الحمد لله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد ازويز اخواني واخواتي الله تعالى يبارك فيكم we begin by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with praises and exaltations that only he is worthy of we begin by sending his salawat and his salamat his blessings and his peace upon the last and final messenger muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam then i want to begin firstly by thanking our brothers here a masjid a da'wa ila tawhid in Baltimore, the admin and the community for arranging this gathering. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put it on their scales of good deeds for those that have organized, for those that are speaking, and for those that are attending. Indeed, these gatherings are a means of benefit. And those gatherings in which the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, and the ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam are studied, then indeed those gatherings are the gatherings that are sought out by the malaika. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this gathering from amongst those gatherings. The topic of today's one day conference is present day calamities, contemporary issues that are facing the ummah. And there's no doubt that as Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he mentioned when some of the people approached him about taking weapons against the leaders of the Muslims. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he answered and he said, لا يأتي زمان إلا والذي بعده شر منه لا يأتي زمان إلا والذي بعده شر منه that there is not a time that will come except that the time that follows it will be worse than the time previous to that. So the issues that afflict the Muslims, they will increase with the increasing of time. And from those afflictions that will afflict the Muslims is the lack of knowledge, the lack of ilm amongst the people. And my topic today is related to this topic. And the title is Clout Seekers on the Internet, on Social Media. 
And this is indeed a calamity of modern times. There is no doubt that those that sought to separate the Muslim from the knowledge of his religion, that these, these enemies and these individuals have existed throughout the ages. To separate the Muslim from their scholar, to separate the Muslim from al-ilm al-shari'i, from legislated knowledge. This has been the goal of a shaytan since the coming of the time of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. This has been the goal of the shayateen from amongst the men and from amongst the jinnat. This was the purpose as to why the kuffar of Quraysh would label the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam as a sha'ir. This is not ilm. This is not knowledge that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is coming with. But this is, he's a sha'ir, he's a poet, or he's a sahir. This is not knowledge, this is magic. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's coming with magic. This is not knowledge. Or they would say he is majnoon, he's crazy, he's lost his intellect. So as to separate the people from the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of his religion. But the calamity is greater, my brothers and sisters in Islam. The calamity is greater when those that stand between knowledge and the people, they adorn themselves with the clothing of knowledge. The calamity is greater that when the person who's standing in front of you and is in reality withholding you and separating you from the scholars of Islam, from learning the affairs of your deen, they are not from amongst the kuffar. They are not open enemies to Islam. But rather they adorn themselves with the adornment of Islam. So you find upon them the signs of Islam. In fact, you find upon many of them signs of sunnah. So that a person, they look at them. And, they, and their heart is attracted to what they are upon. Because they have beautified it in a manner which is intended to attract a person and attract them away from the sittings of knowledge. And the reality has become, and this is something that can be witnessed. Anyone can witness this, anyone can go upon the internet and look at this. And this reality is out in the open that they have truly separated the people from knowledge. So for example, you will find online, and you would go to YouTube, and you will find the durus of, for example, a Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin rahimahullahu ta'ala. And a Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymin rahimahullahu ta'ala, one of the fuqaha of our time, Allah ta'ala yarhamuhu rahmatan wasi'a. You found that he was a man diligent in teaching and systematic in teaching. So you will find many of his lessons on a single book in the hundreds. In the hundreds where a Shaykh Muhammad bin Salih al Uthaymeen, he delves into the affairs of ilm, whichever science he is speaking of, whether it be tafsir, whether it be hadith, whether it be fiqh, whatever he is speaking of, but he dwells into it with detail, in a manner accessible to the layman. And you will find that these videos that exist in the hundreds on a single book, that each one of these videos, one video, then it has 200 views. And then you look at another video and it has 400 views. And then you look at another video and as it continues, you find that the, the views on it keep going down and down and down. So much so the latter, the last of the durus may have less than 100 views. And then you have these individuals that love to pose, that come and they pose. And I speak very generally of them. As you will find them in different manners, you would find them presenting themselves in different ways. Nowadays, a topic of discussion is FIFA. In the Masajid, the after Isha lecture is on benefits from FIFA. 
This is the after Isha lecture at the Masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the topic of conversation is which team performed how many sajdas after how many goals that they did and how this is the success of the ummah. It lies on Morocco winning this game and the sajda that they performed in front of the people. So I speak of them very generally. And when you look at their videos in which they are sitting and they're eating a burger here and they're speaking about this, then their videos has 1.3 million views. And you look at another one of their videos in which they're yelling and screaming and without making any sense. And they have 5.6, 10.1, 12 million views. So it is no doubt that this is a calamity upon this ummah. And to approach this topic, it was a challenge as you can approach it from so many different angles. And the harms of these individuals is so blatant and so open that it becomes difficult to pinpoint where to begin and where to end. But I found the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which he says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وإذا جاءهم أمر من الأمن أو الخوف أذاعوا به ولو ردوه إلى الرسول وإلى أول الأمر منهم لعلمه الذين يستنبطونه منهم ولو لا فضل الله عليكم ورحمته لاتبعتم الشيطان إلا قليلا I found this ayah my brothers and sisters very uh, fitting for the topic at hand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوْ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ That if some affair reaches them, if something comes to them, they hear of something. And the weight of that affair is great. The weight of this affair that they're speaking of is great regarding their safety or regarding fear. They announce it, they spread it amongst the people. This spreading has become very easy nowadays. This spreading has become very easy nowadays. There was a time where the spreading of something, it required physical interaction with someone, which required a person to put in physical, um, uh, 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 a physical effort. If I want to spread something, I need to exit my house. I need to walk over to this person's house. And I need to tell them that required physical effort. And then that physical effort, it lessened. So by way of spreading affairs, you can spread affairs. By way of a telegram, by way of a letter. But even that required what? It required physical effort. And then there came the age of the email. And even that required some level of physical effort and then came the age of the cell phone and of the smartphone and then came the age of social media where to share something with thousands of people if not hundreds of thousands of people requires absolutely no thought and just the flicker of a finger and what you want to share can be shared across the dunya this is why this ayah came to my mind that any time something comes to them which causes their blood to rush a little bit, immediately they share it out. WhatsApp groups, Telegram groups, Twitter feeds, Instagram, YouTube. It becomes shared and shared. And not mo most of the people do not stop and think, who is this speaking? Who is the one from whom this person has gotten knowledge? What are they speaking of? Is it befitting? Or is it just an emotional outburst at the time? They don't think. But because it hits their heart, because it hits them, they share it. And how far is this habit from the statement of Muhammad ibn Sirin, rahimahullah ta'ala, from the tabi'un, إِنَّ هَذَا الْعِلْمَ دِينَ فَانْظُرُوا عَمَّنْ تَأْخُذُونَ دِينَكُمْ This religion is knowledge. 
Be careful from whom you are taking your knowledge. How far is this action from the statement of Muhammad ibn Sirin? Rahimahullah ta'ala. How far is this action from the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu in ja'akum fasiqun bi naba'im fatabayyanu. That if a fasiq, if a sinner comes to you with a news, fatabayyanu. Then seek out clarification. A shaykh Abu Muhammad Badi'uddin Shah al-Rashidi, Allah Ta'ala yarhamuhu, he mentions this ayah as an asal. It is a foundational principle in the accepting of knowledge. Because to know whether an individual is a fasiq or is not a fasiq, it requires a person's knowledge of who that individual is. From whom did they learn? What are their mawaqif? What is their aqidah? What is their manhaj? Who were their scholars? Who are they attached to? This is knowledge that is mandatory before we take knowledge from someone. Because, inna hadal ilma deen. This is religion. So be aware, be careful regarding whom you are taking your religion from. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَلَوْ رَدُّوهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُلِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ لَعَلِمَهُ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَنْبِطُونَهُ مِنْهُمْ If they would have returned this news to the Messenger, أَوْ أُلِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ Or those that have authority amongst them. Meaning, مِنْ بَابْ الْأَوْلَىٰ What is more befitting for a person when news comes to him is that you return it back to the people of knowledge. And in the time of the Prophet والسلام, it was indeed the Prophet himself وسلم, to whom these affairs were returned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says فَإِن تَنَازَعَتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرُدُّوهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ If you disagree about something, then bring it back to Allah and His Messenger if you are truly believers in Allah in the last day. And along with the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wassalam وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ Those that have authority. And those that have authority as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Qur'an, أَتِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَتِيعُ الرَّسُولُ وَأُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُ That obey Allah and obey the Messenger and those that are, have authority amongst you. That the people of authority are divided into two categories. And they are the Umara, they are the rulers of the Muslims. And they are the ulema and the scholars of the Muslims. As for the rulers of the Muslims, then they are those that mandate the people with righteousness. They mandate the people with righteousness physically. And as for the ulema, then the ulema are those that mandate the people with righteousness with their tongues. So this is the correct manner of spreading knowledge. Returning it back to the scholars. Returning it back to the people of knowledge. Because they understand the reality of it. I've mentioned this qissa many times before. And the reality of the people of ilm. And this qissa goes back over, over two decades. Where there was a question that was posed from a sister that was residing here while I was in Medina. And she was a sister of Indian background. And she said that her father was Quburi. Quburi meaning that he worshipped yani, graves. He saw it to be allowed to go to a grave and to make dua at a grave.
And the sister, she was looking at the time to get married. And her father was not allowing the marriage. So the question was taken to one of the younger students of knowledge. And they were asked regarding the question and the answer was given, saying that as long as her father does not pray, and he is a quburi, then it is allowed for her. Her father is no longer her wali. Her father is no longer her her wali, her caretaker, and it is then allowed for her to seek out someone else as her caretaker. And then the next day, or the day after that, for some reason that I do not remember, the same question was posed to the muhaddith of al Madina, a shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Allah Ta'ala yahfadhu. And a shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad outrightly said no. It is not allowed. She is not to leave her house, but she is to be patient within her house. And if someone can give the father some amount of money so as to allow her to get married, then this is better as I fear the harm that will come from taking this girl from her home. This is an excellent example of how the people of knowledge, the ulema, they look at these affairs, that a person from amongst the laymen, even those that are young in their knowledge, will not see the wisdom and the hikmah in something. Will not see this, but a shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Allah Ta'ala yahfadhu, he saw this, and he saw that it will lead to a greater harm. And there was no doubt that once a person hears of the opinion of this alim, of this muhaddith, of this da'i to Allah, wala nuzakki ala Allahi ahada, that it makes sense. This advice has weight to anyone that has intellect. And this is the order upon us to return our knowledge to these people of knowledge, to the scholars. And then those that are their students, and those that they recommend, because in this manner we safeguard our religion and we do not leave it to the whims of TikTok. We don't leave it to whatever algorithm is running YouTube to put onto your phone as to what your religion needs to be today. And this is the reality. The reality that because of these affairs, the people have left off sittings of knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is not learned by way of 20 second YouTube clips or 10 second TikTok films. But it is learned by learning the qawaid, by learning the usul and the furu'. It is learned by learning foundational principles. And then what branches out from that? This is what offers an individual thabat. It makes them thabit. That when a fitna comes, a trial or a tribulation comes, and it will come. And it will come. Trials and tribulations will come, they will continue to come. And this is the imtihan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first ones you see fall at those times are those that are far from the sittings of knowledge. That don't sit, that don't learn, but they have secluded themselves to these small videos, to these small sharings, thinking that in this manner they are getting what is sufficient for them to learn. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, if it was not for the bounty of Allah upon you, if it was not for His mercy, you would have all followed the shaytan except a very small number from amongst you. Al Imam Abdurrahman bin Nasir al Sa'di, Rahimahullahu Ta'ala, he says regarding this ayah, He says, This is ta'adib. 
التأديب. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you adab. How to be and how not to be. Do not react like this. That anything that comes to you, you begin to spread it. Like a teenage girl from high school, anything comes to you, I need to spread it. I need to be the first one that gets it out. This is ta'deeb min indillah. هذا تأديب من الله لعبادي أن فعلهم هذا غير اللائق this unbefitting action وأنه ينبغي لهم إذا جاءهم أمر من الأمور المهمة والمصالح العامة ما يتعلق بالأمن وسرور المؤمنين أو الخوف الذي فيه مصيبة عليهم أن يتثبتوا ولا يستعجلوا بإشاعة ذلك الخبر he says that here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that it is befitting and now yambaghi. That if an affair comes to them, that is important. In it, there is a benefit for the general masses. ما يتعلق بالأمن وسرور المؤمنين What is in relation to our peace, safety, the happiness of the believers or something which is fearful in which there is a trial something in which there is a tribulation an yuthabbitu an yatathabbatu afwan to affirm to affirm wa la yasta'dilu do not be quick don't show isti'jal let me share this quickly bi isha'ati dhalik al khabar bal يُرَدُّونَهُ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ وَإِلَىٰ أُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ You returned it back to the messenger. In the time of the messenger, it was returning it back to the person of the Prophet ﷺ. And after the death of the Prophet ﷺ, it is returning it back to his sunnah, to his authentic sunnah. And أُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْهُمْ And those that have authority amongst them. أَهْلُ الرَّأِي The people of الرَّأِي and al-ra'i ya ikhwani, what is intended by al-ra'i here is not al-ra'i al-madhmoom. There is a ra'i which is madhmoom, which is dispraiseworthy. And then there is a ra'i which is not dispraiseworthy, but a ra'i which is based upon kitab and sunnah. So what is intended here is not the ra'i which is madhmoom. And we'll come to what al-imam ibn qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala says regarding these types of opinions and ar-ra'i that many of the people nowadays they speak of. What their opinion is and what they think. He said, you return it back to ahl ar-ra'i wal-ilm wal-nushi wal-aqli wal-razanati alladheena ya'rifoon al-umur. You return these affairs back to the people of ar-ra'i, the people of knowledge, the people of advice, the people of intellect. The people of sobriety, sober. They are sober in the, in the manner in which they present themselves. <laughs> those people that know these affairs. Those people that have knowledge of these affairs. <laughs> they know the affairs of benefit. And they are know and they know what is the opposite of that. فَإِنْ أَرَأُوا فِي إِذَاعَتِهِ مَصْلِحَةً وَنِشَاطٍ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَسُرُورًا لَهُمْ وَتَحَرُّزًا مِنْ أَعْدَائِهِمْ فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ So if they see in the spreading of this some sort of benefit, either to the benefit of the believers, or they see in it something which will be harmful to their enemies, then they will spread it. They will do what they need to do with it. But as for leaving these affairs amongst the general masses to spread whatever it is they want to spread, in this there is harm for the ummah. And this is why, and this is why the scholars of Islam in the accepting of ahadith, in the accepting of knowledge, they looked at isnad. They looked at the chain of narration. They looked at these affairs so as to ascertain the authenticity of that knowledge. And if you lose this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, if we lose this level of dedication 
in ascertaining our knowledge and looking at those from whom we are seeking knowledge and what is their background and who are they around and what are they upon then the example of the Jews and the Christians is in front of you as the Prophet of Allah والسلام, he said to the Sahaba look at the Jews and the Christians they have books in their hands they have what they refer to as the Bible in their hands they have what they refer to as the Torah in their hands. What benefit does that do to them? What do you see from them? From Tawheed. What do you see from them? From righteousness. And they have books in front of them. Why? Because they did not ascertain their knowledge. Why? They did not ascertain from whom they were taking their knowledge. And it was cause of destruction for them. It is indeed the scholars, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that are the du'at to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the ulema, in reality, that are callers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is those that are the students of scholars, and those that are recommended by the scholars, those that are known from whom knowledge should be taken and this is in agreement this is indeed in agreement with the actions of the salaf as the sha'ir he said faqidu shay la yu'tihi if someone has nothing to give then they can't give it if you don't have knowledge to give then you're not going to offer knowledge to the people and we see this amongst the amongst these people that have have limited themselves and you look at the realities ikhwani you look at the realities of the likes of Muhammad Hijab and you look at the reality of the likes of Ali Da'wa or Muhammad Mufti Munir or you look at the reality of Daniel Pikachu or Hadikachu or whatever his name is if you look at the realities and you compare them to those that have followed the advices of the scholars of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah in this time. Those that have followed the advices, for example, of a Shaykh Muqbil ibn Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Ta'ala Yarhamu, whom advised the Salafis, as we know from those students that studied with Shaykh Muqbil, and those students that Shaykh Muqbil advised us with to establish our own masajid. And to teach in our masajid the books of the sunnah. And to teach in our masajid the aqeedah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And to separate ourselves from Ahlul Bid'ah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, what you see from fruits of our da'wah in the Gharb, in the West, generally, and in the States specifically, is because the advices of these scholars was followed. The advices of a Shaykh Muqbil Rahimahullah Ta'ala was followed. The advices of a Shaykh Rabi' ibn Hadi al-Madkhali Hafidahullah Ta'ala was followed. And advices were sought from the scholars of this time. And our da'wah was established upon it. And for that reason, you find that the, our masajid are today filled with lessons in aqidah and lessons in manhaj and lessons in fiqh and lessons in tafsir and lessons in lugha it is for this reason that our communities are building schools it is for this reason that our communities are educating children it is for this reason that our communities are diligent and reaching out to Muslims that are incarcerated and offering them knowledge which is authentic and providing books and refuting Ahlul Bid'ah it is because of this advice compare this to the likes of these individuals that have limited themselves to the internet and have made their careers off the internet in driving a wedge and separating the ignorant from the people of knowledge. 
And what is the result? What is the result when these individuals separate a person from knowledge? The result, my brothers and sisters in Islam, it can be seen in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma. He said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ إِنْتِزَاعًا يَنْتَزِعُهُمْ مِنَ النَّاسِ He said that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not take away knowledge by snatching it away from the servant. وَلَكِنْ يَقْبِضُ الْعِلْمَ بِقَبْضِ الْعُلِمَاء but rather Allah will take away knowledge by taking away the scholars. Hatta ida lam yaturuk aliman ittakhadha nasu ru'usan juhalan fa su'ilu fa aftaw bi ghayri ilmin fa ballu wa aballu. He said so much so that there will not remain a person of knowledge and the people will take ru'usan juhalan. Those that they go to knowledge, they will take the ignorant ones as the people they go to knowledge, for knowledge. And this is fi'lan what you find many of these people that are addicted to their smartphone screens and whatever app they are, whatever is their poison of choice. You find this is their reality, they have taken ru'us and juhalan. They've taken an ignorant, an ignorant group of people as their teachers. So you find one of them that for example if he wants to teach about the he wants to teach about yani, keeping your body in shape you find him yani, walking around the gym with people weightlifting in the back and he's just walking around the gym and someone's recording him uh, reading a hadith about physical health. This is ilm. This is how knowledge is taught. You find another one of them that to turn the people away from drugs he makes a video to show how is it that you can get high in a halal manner. This is the videos that they post. فَاقِدُ الشَّيْءِ لَا يُعْطِيهِ Someone who has nothing if he has no knowledge then what is he going to give you except garbage? And this is the reality of these individuals. And this is what they give. So instead of speaking with knowledge, you find them speaking with their own intellect. You find them speaking with philosophy. You find them speaking in this manner. And if you separate the people with that, as the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَسُئِلُوا And then they are the ones that are asked, فَأَفْتَوْ بِغَيْرِ ilm. They speak without knowledge. فَاقِدُ لَا يُعْطِيهِ They speak without knowledge. They themselves are astray and they cause others to go astray. So from the harms, from the harms that these people inflict upon the ummah, is that they cause the people themselves to waste away knowledge. They cause the people themselves to waste away knowledge. Ibn Battal, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَنْزِعُ الْعِلْمَ مِنَ الْعِبَادِ بَعْدَ أَنْ يَتَفَضَّلَ بِهِ عَلَيْهِمْ After Allah Ta'ala blesses the people with knowledge, Allah will not take that knowledge away. وَلَا يَسْتَرْجِعُ مَا وَهَبَ لَهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ الْمُعَدِّ إِلَى مَعْرِفَتِهِ Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is not going to just snatch away يَسْتَرْجِعْ يعني seek, away, seek to take away knowledge مَا وَهَبَ لَهُمْ that Allah gifted to them min al ilm al muaddi ila ma'rifatih from that knowledge that will lead to knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is ilm. Ilm is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Knowledge is to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that we can worship upon ilm. Wa batta shari'atuh wa inna ma yakunu intiza'uhu. The removal of knowledge, Ibn Battal, he says, is by them wasting knowledge. 
It is by them wasting knowledge. What do we mean by wasting knowledge? Wasting knowledge, if we were to give an example which even a child can understand, is that you cook for the child a healthy, a nutritious meal. And in it are the greens, and in it are, is bread, and in it is everything, protein, and everything that the child needs. And you put it in front of the child and the child does not eat it. So it goes bad and then it goes into the trash. This is the wasting of knowledge. This is the wasting of knowledge. That the scholars are present. Al-Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in Sunan al-Kubra, the statement of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhum, I believe. And this was at the death of Zayd ibn Thabit. At the death of Zayd ibn Thabit. And he advised the people, Abdullah ibn Abbas, and he said, if anyone wants to see the leaving of knowledge, if anyone wants to see the leaving of knowledge and how knowledge leaves, then let them take a look at this grave. Let them take a look at this affair. And he mentions the burying. Today we are burying knowledge with the death of Zayd ibn Thabit. And this is Imam al-Tahawi. Rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions this. He says that the taking away of knowledge that even if there are scholars, even if ilm is to be sought and it can be sought, that the people don't seek it. And the people don't seek it out. And this has become the calamity of this age, of this time. That these individuals have taken to a system which is meant to destroy the human intellect. To destroy the human intellect. And have taken it to drive a wedge between the people and knowledge. To drive a wedge between the people and the scholars of Allah, and the scholars of Al-Islam. فَلَا يُوجَدْ مَنْ يَخْلُفُ مَنْ مَضَى فَأَنْذَرَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ بِقَبْضِ الْخَيْرِ كُلِّهِ So, that even though knowledge is taking their knowledge, the people of knowledge are present, even then, you find the people are not in those sittings. Sittings of knowledge are there, they're not in the sittings. They're not learning. So when that scholar, they die, Shaykh Abdul Rahman Muhyiddin, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who just died some weeks ago. And but a week before, or a few days before that, is Shaykh Ubaid bin Abdullah al-Jabiri, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, who passed away. And those that have passed away over the last decade, and those that have passed away before them, that is knowledge that is going into the graves. And we find many of the people that we advise to benefit from this time, my brothers. Benefit from this time. In your communities, Alhamdulillah Ta'ala, I remember a time when we had no masajid. I remember that time. We had no masajid. I remember a time where sittings of knowledge used to be in basements. I remember that time. That you will pick, find two or three people and you will sit down and you would explain and you would explain and you would explain. But we had no masajid. We did not have centers and we did not have durus. And then consistency upon that by the advice of our scholars. And the consistency of our teachers. That they continued and they continued and Alhamdulillah Ta'ala. By the blessing of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, you see what you see from lessons in our masajid. وَلَا نُزَكِّ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدًا We don't praise over Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala anyone else. This is nothing but the father of Allah Jalla Jalaluhu upon us. But I advise to benefit from these sittings. If we were to look just at this DMV, you find, and I've mentioned this previously, 
that in a week you have over 20 different lessons. In one week, you have over 20 different lessons. In just aqidah, you can, te you can pick between 5 or 6 books. In just aqidah, you can pick between 5 or 6 books that are being taught. And in fiqh, and in lugha, and in manhaj, and there are lessons for kids. So benefit from these sittings before there comes a time that these sittings are not available. You need not drive but 5 or 10 mile radius from this masjid, ikhwan. That sittings of knowledge in these masajid is a movie night on Friday. I'm not lying that a person says that perhaps he's exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Within 5 to 10 mile radius of this masjid, find masajid, multiple masajid. That a night at the masjid is a movie and popcorn. So benefit from these, these sittings of knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. So what occurs? When you separate the people from the people of knowledge. Al-Imam Al-Qurtubi, in his book Al-Mufhim, not Sahib Al-Tafsir. He said, هذا الحديث بيّن كيفية رفع العلم This hadith, it shows how it is that knowledge will be removed. How it is that knowledge will be raised. وظهور الجهل And how it is that ignorance will appear amongst the people. Ignorance. وَهُوَ نَصٌ فِي أَنَّ رَفْعَ الْعِلْمِ لَا يَكُونُ بِمَحْوِهِ مِنَ الصُّدُورِ It is a text which shows knowledge is not going to disappear from the chests. يعني the muhaddith is not going to wake up one morning and hadith is gone from his chest. بَلْ بِمَوْتِ الْعُلِمَاءِ But by the death of the scholars. وَبَقَاءَ الْجُحَّالِ And this is the point. And the remaining of the ignorant. The remaining of the ignorant. الَّذِينَ يَتَعَاطَوْنَ مَنَاصِبَ الْعُلِمَاءِ فِي الْفُطْيَةِ وَالتَّعْلِيمِ يُفْطُونَ بِالْجَهْلِ وَيُعَلِّمُونَهُ فَيَنْتَشِرُ الْجَهْلِ فَيَنْتَشِرْ الْجَهْلِ He said that with the death of the scholars there will remain the ignorant ones. So their fatawa will be based upon ignorance. And they will speak based upon ignorance. And this is what you find amongst the people now. And you see the reality of these individuals. The, the reality of the likes of Muhammad Hijab. The reality of the likes of Ali Da'wah. And all of this ilk of people. Is that you can clearly see in them. A inferiority complex. You can see this in them. So they look at the philosophers of this time. Right? Jordan, Peterson, Peterson, whatever his name is. And this is what they aspire to be. So you find them speaking with their speech, speaking with their terminology, speaking how they speak. So instead of quoting a hadith, they quote Aristotle. And instead of mentioning ayat, they speak of Socrates. So you will find them speaking of what Martin Luther said and what this individual said. And we said, Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Yakfina ma qala huwa Allahu subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitabihi. Yakfina ma qala huwa Rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi sunnati. That is sufficient for us. I advise you, there was a question that was posed, and it is befitting to the topic, that this is a disease which is spreading amongst our sisters. And I say this because if it is a disease which is spreading amongst our wives, then in one way or another, the husband has a hand in it. So it is upon us to be diligent in understanding this, that you find them turning to these online forums and these social media rooms to seek out the solution to their problems. 
So I have an anxiety problem. So I'm going to seek out sisters that have anxiety problems. And we're going to support each other in our anxiety problems. And I have this issue, so I'm going to seek out other women that have this issue. And they're going to help me seeking, help me solve this issue. And you find them inclining and using their terminology of feminism now. You find them using the terminology of feminism now. The woman is this, and the woman is this, and the woman is this, and the woman is that. All of this because they have turned away from the guidance of Allah and the guidance of His Messenger for everything that you need, my brothers and sisters in Islam, the reason that a person, they move to these affairs is because they remain ignorant. Firstly and foremostly of the aqidah of Islam. So the aqidah regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is deficient. And they don't learn the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nor do they return back to the people of knowledge and to the books of knowledge to learn and increase themselves. So as to increase their tawakkul. So as to increase their tawakkul in Allah. So they are deficient in their tawakkul. They are deficient in their tawakkul because they are deficient in their iman. And they are deficient in their iman because they are deficient in seeking out knowledge. And memorizing knowledge. And understanding knowledge. And because they find themselves in that place, then they seek out a solution to their answers where there are no solutions. But rather these forums we find only increase them in their anxiety. Only increase them in their grief. Only increase them in these affairs. He says, فَيَنْتَشِرُ الْجَهَلِ So now ignorance becomes, ignorance becomes widespread. Why? Everyone is listening to the ignorant. And you don't need to put in any work for it. You just pull out your phone. And YouTube's algorithm does the work for you. They'll send all the ignorance you want to your phone. So it becomes spread amongst the people. And he says, this is in his time, this is 7th century. He says, وَقَدْ ظَهَرَ ذَلِكْ That's already happened. That's already happened, this is 7 centuries ago. وَوُجِدَ عَلَى نَحْوِ مَا أَخْبَرَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَكَانَ ذَلِكَ دَلِيلًا مِنْ أَدِلَّةِ نَبُوَّتِهِ just as the Prophet ﷺ said, then that is exactly what has come into being, and that is a sign of the messengership of Muhammad ﷺ. وَخُصُوصًا فِي هَذِهِ الْأَزْمَانِ Especially in these times. إِذْ قَدْ وَلِيَ الْمَدَارِسِ وَالْفُطْيَ كَثِيرٌ مِّنَ الْجُحَالِ وَالصُّبْيَانِ It's almost like he's speaking of today. He says that you find that the issues of fatawa, of giving fatawa and al-madaris, the affairs of teaching. These have been taken over by the ignorant was sibyan. A sibyan, what is a sibyan? Children. It's children. Right? You find a person sitting on YouTube, right? Seems like he just turned 19. He's a mufti, he's an alim, he's a sheikh, he's an ustad. 19 years old, 17 years old. And it is not in the hands of those that have the right to those places. And you find that these are those people that slowly but surely they move away. So instead of speaking, you may find them in the beginning speaking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, but surely you see them moving away from the texts of Al-Islam. And they begin to speak without knowledge. Al-Imam ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he says, هو الكلام في الدين بالخرص والظن مع التفريط والتقصير في معرفة النصوص وفهمها. 
He says, the speech of theirs, it is speaking regarding the religion with yani, a one. Conjecture. This is how they speak. They don't speak with surety because they have no usul, they have no qawaid. They have no principles. They've not learned in that manner. They've not learned with the scholars. So you find them, and you wish washi, they speak on conjecture. Now along with that, they fall short, purposefully, they fall short in their knowledge of the texts. Wafahmiha and in their understanding of it. Wastinbatil ahkam minha and how to extract the rulings based upon these Islamic texts. فَإِنَّ مَنْ جَهَلَهَا And we'll, we'll stop close to this point. فَإِنَّ مَنْ جَهَلَهَا وَقَاسَ بِرَأْيِهِ فِيمَا سُئِلَ عَنْهُ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ For indeed the one who is ignorant of these affairs وَقَاسَ بِرَأْيِهِ فِيمَا سُئِلَ عَنْهُ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ And then what does he do? He's asked of something regarding knowledge but he has no knowledge of it. So what does he do? He does qiyas. He does qiyas with what he knows. What is qiyas? Huh? Measurement, right? More qiyas is yani bringing about bringing about a hukam on one thing by looking at the hukam of something else. Yani drawing analogy between two things. Right? Drawing analogy between two things. So these individuals, what they do is Instead of busying themselves with the books of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, because they belittle him and they don't see knowledge in his books, which in itself is a point. Because the books of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, for the one who opens them, are vast majority, 90% what? Qala Allah wa qala Rasul. So a person comes and says, There's no knowledge in these books. It shows that this person, his jahl is not jahl basit. His jahl is not jahl basit. But rather it's what? Murakkab. Meaning what? Huh? He pretends to know. Yani, he presents himself as someone who knows. Even though the reality is that he doesn't know. But he doesn't even know that he doesn't know. He doesn't even know that he doesn't know. And Jahl Basit is the one who doesn't know, but knows that he doesn't know. So the likes of these individuals that have made, right? Because you see this, for example, amongst Yas al-Qadi and, and his ilk. Those that turned away, these are, this is the group that turned away from Islamic knowledge. They had access to it. But they turned away from it. And they took upon themselves because they saw the West. They saw the West and Western civilization. And what, what they find in Western civilization. And then what they see from poverty and what they see from what they see in the Muslim lands. They saw that to mean what? That well the Westerners must have done something correct. And we must be doing something incorrect. So instead of relying upon Islamic knowledge, the way Islamic knowledge has been transmitted, they began to rely upon Orientalism. This is their reality. This is their reality. So they began to rely on that. So now when an affair comes to them, and their readings are in philosophy, and their readings are in Orientalism, and their readings are in, in this affair, in, in astronomy and all of these affairs, right? When an affair comes to them, what do they do? They draw analogy between what they know to make a hukam upon something that they know nothing of. So they themselves, for ballu wa ballu. They themselves are astray and they lead others astray. And he says,
He says, وَقَاسَ بِرَأْيِهِ فِي مَا سُئِلَ عَنْهُ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ بَلْ لِمُجَرَّدِ قَدْرٍ جَامِعٍ بَيْنَ شَيْئَيْنِ أُلْحِقَ أَحْدُمَا بِالْآخَرِ and they don't have knowledge of anything. But they just see two things to be similar in one way or another. They may see one similarity in this and this, so they bring qiyas, they bring in and they rule upon one thing with the hukam of something else. And they do so min ghayri nadharin ila nususi wal athar min ghayri nadhar they do so without returning without returning to the texts and to the narrations this is that ra'i which is madhmum this is that speaking of of an affair with your own opinion which is dispraiseworthy al-batil so they themselves are astray and they lead others astray, uh, astray. And this affair, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is a calamity upon the ummah. And I speak from the angle of those that are inflicted with it because of their phones. And I advise you, for these apps, to delete these apps and to benefit them from, uh, to benefit from them in a manner which will maintain your deen. To benefit from them in a manner that will maintain your deen. The issue, my brothers and sisters, is not that there is no benefit in them. For indeed, you find there are many lectures and many lessons that are present. For example, on YouTube, they are present. So, if you want to benefit from these affairs, benefit from them in a manner which will protect your religion. And it will protect your dunya. It will protect your religion and protect your dunya. The effect that these apps and their 20 second or 30 second little clips that they send, it has an adverse effect on the human mind. In that you accustom yourself not to pay attention to something for longer than 20 seconds. So you find that a person who's accustomed to them cannot sit in a class for 30 or 40 or 50 minutes and write notes and ask questions. They can't do that because they're not accustomed to it. They're accustomed to little 20 second catchy phrases with smoke in the background and a side clip of whoever is sitting there and then this side and then in the front. So instead of even paying attention, to whatever is being said, they're paying more attention to the background. And this is the manner in which they do it. These are people, they do studies. So you look at their videos, and a person is not looking at the titles of the videos. What they're looking at is the funny face the man is making on the video. And because they made a funny face and they're in this angle or they're that angle, you click on it. That's not by chance. <coughs> They actually have tutorials on this, on how to make people click on your videos. From those things is you put an image up which is out of the ordinary. Which is out of the ordinary. So you find someone choking you, son. You put this on and the person is inclined to click on it. And this is how they spread knowledge. So the harm of these individuals is vast, but benefit. If you want to use these affairs, then take these lessons. For example, the lesson of Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen, those lessons that have been translated, take them and study them systematically. So as to save yourself, if you're in your car, if you are in your car, choose a lesson that you will be listening to every single day when you're going to work. And mandate that upon yourself for a period of time, a week or two weeks or three weeks. Mandate that, even though it's hard. Maybe the first few lessons you can't pay attention. Maybe you're not betting the, benefiting the first few lessons. But as you continue upon that, and you're diligent upon that, and you remain patient upon that, you will find the benefit coming. And repeat them. You didn't benefit, repeat it again, and repeat it again. In this manner, you can benefit yourself. But take from those that are known from amongst the scholars and their students.
take from those that are our known teachers in the West. And do not make a person your teacher because they were able to get through on your TikTok feed for 10 seconds. And they said something which you think affected your heart. And a person says, no, I'm not taking them as my teacher. No. But the moment you watch that clip for however long you watch that clip, even though you may not take them as your teacher, TikTok will make him your teacher. And the more TikTok makes him your teacher, the more you begin to think of him as your teacher. This is not the manner of learning. Learning is done with principles. That a person learns the principles. And then they learn what branches out from that. In this manner, they have thabat, they have consistency. This consistency remains with them. Is it by chance? My brothers, I'm asking. Rhetorical question. Is it by chance that we see our brothers and our teachers in the gharb? And even prior to that, our scholars, for example, Sheikh Rabi' ibn Hadi, Al Madkhali, Sheikh Ubaid, Sheikh Fawzan, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin. Is it by chance that we see these scholars that over the last 30, 40, 50 years, their mawaqif have not changed? That what they wrote in their younger years and what they wrote in their latter years is the same? And it's not changed? And then that unity, it surpasses that. So you go back to the scholars that came in the previous century. You go to the scholars, Sheikh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, Muhammad Amin al-Shanqiti, Sheikh Hamad al-Ansari, and those scholars that preceded them, that they were all on the same thing also. And then the generation before that, and the generation before that, all the way to the time of Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Qayyim, and after them, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, even prior to that, to Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and even before them, that this aqidah and this manhaj has remained the same. And these individuals, you find that they're on something today, by tonight they're going to be on something else. Is that by chance? No. It is because our knowledge and the manner in which our scholars have taught us it enforces thabat upon the truth. It enforces principles that keep a person grounded regardless of the fitna. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection. We'll start with this bi-idhnillahi ta'ala as we've delayed the salah and uh, our next speaker inshaAllah ta'ala should be here. But we'll suffice with this amount for today. May Allah Ta'ala make it a benefit. Hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in.